The first thing on the agenda, well, first thing on the agenda, which I forgot to put on the agenda, is motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Um, Jane tells me that she wrote in that I left the meeting, and that was because my camera went off. So she thought I left, but I was still on. Now I'm oh, right. Yeah, I, and, and that has been fixed. Okay. Okay. So it's, I guess, I guess, motion to accept the minutes as revised. Okay, whatever. Because <laughs> there was that and there was a typo. Yeah, yeah, Jane, Jane and I took care of that. Thank you. Good, um, we have to do the roll call thing. Uh, let's see, Chip, I can't call on you because you weren't at the meeting. Uh, I vote, whoops, hold on, I'm letting Ashley in. I say yes. John? Yes. Jane? Yes. Brenda? I wasn't at the meeting. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, Fred? Yes. Keith? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Register that. That dog voted. Yeah, the, the dog had opinions. Oh, and, uh, okay, now our dogs heard that and they're going. Let's see, Bill and Zach, were you at the meeting? Yeah. Okay, do you, so Bill? Yeah. Zach gives a thumbs up. Yeah. Joyce, I don't think you were at our meeting last month. I don't think so. Don, I don't think you were. Adelia, you were. All right. You don't have to have been at the meeting. It's just it need to be a member. <laughs> to accept to accept the minutes? Yeah. But how do you know if you're voting that they're accurate? If you're not happy with what but there, then you can you can say I don't accept or you can just pass. Oh, okay. Okay, so then I have to go back to Brenda. Are they, I mean they can I, I accept. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Ashley, go to accept the minutes. That's what you've come in on. Pass. I wasn't. I wasn't there. Okay. And Lisa. Pass. I mean, I was there. I, sorry. <laughs> okay. Nope. But we. So the minutes are accepted as amended. <clears throat> Next on the list, I've labeled it funding update. <clears throat> a lot of things fall under this. First of all, at town meeting tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow night, weather permitting, if not, then next week, I think. Um, one of the warrant items is $20,000, the third $20,000 installment from the town. <clears throat> Excuse me, so hopefully that will pass at town meeting. We also know that the Senate has put into their budget $10,000 from the state. And I have not heard confirmation. Natalie was agreeing with that. I haven't heard confirmation that the House, like the House and Senate have to reconcile budgets. But it sounds like the state is like our representatives are trying to get $10,000 from the state. So if all goes well between the two sources, that's $30,000. That is the good news. I don't wanna say the bad news, but the next part of funding is we need to start doing fundraising for next year. And quite honestly, we were holding off doing that until we got through June this year, because we were gonna confuse people of what June were we talking about. So we're getting ready to ramp, or we wanna get ready to ramp up fundraising. However, with Fred's appointment to the select board. Election, election. Not election, election, sorry. Election to the select board. Um, he's looked, this gets complicated and he and Joyce can talk through this better than I can, but open meeting laws, he and Joyce can both remain on our committee as long as they distance themselves from discussions or votes for things that go to the select board. So if, for example, the asking the town for $20,000, they couldn't participate on that. The, the issue was, can two select board members remain on our committee? As long as what we are discussing is not select board business, according to Brian and the reading of the law, Fred and Joyce can stay on. Fred, if the committee is comfortable with, 
feels he can stay on as treasurer because the treasurer doesn't make any decisions. The treasurer is executing the will of the group, writing checks, making bank deposits. It's almost a functionary kind of thing. So does anyone object to Fred remaining treasurer um, of the group? Not, not at all. In my case, his being treasurer is as the 501c3, which is a separate entity from the town. Oh, good point. Good point. Yep. Okay. However, Fred and I have talked about this, and he believes he should step down as head of fundraising, because as a member of the select board, it doesn't seem appropriate to be going to local businesses and residents and asking them for money. Is that, could that be construed as undue influence pressure? Just, we, we don't wanna do anything that makes anybody think fishy stuff is going on. So Fred's feeling is that he has to step down as head of fundraising which leaves us without a head of fundraising. To complicate matters, the fundraising committee had three, pe had three people on it. It had four. Well, we, we actually up to five, but two were Alan Sanderson and LaSalle are more recent. They've only been to a couple of meetings. Okay. But it had been I a core group of on my three. list for this committee. I wonder if they should be. You and I can talk about that if they want to be on this. Um, so we need somebody to take over as that, but we also are losing Melissa Caldwell, who was part of the fundraising committee, because at the, as of the end of the month, she's moving to Florida. So first order of business is we need a new head of fundraising in order to get, to, to start into action pretty much July 1. Does anybody have thoughts about that? What about Teresa Belisle? Fred, do you want to talk about her? Talk about Teresa. Ter Teresa, I haven't talked to her recently about it, but she really much prefers to just do the fundraising rather than coordinate or do any administrative. She's fine going and asking people, but she doesn't want to assume the. Uh, you know, the, the over overall oversight function. okay well then in that aspect fred what would happen if you still had in, involvement in as far as you know some of the, what you just said and you refrain yourself from going to anybody and and soliciting doing the soliciting but you assist the committee in some ways that you were before I would be comfortable sort of staying on as, you know, advising and you're know, working with whoever. I don't know that I'd be comfortable really coordinating it and you know, making decisions about who, who should be asked for what. And your name should not be on the masthead. Right. As head of fundraising. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd feel more comfortable if there was someone else who is organizing it, but I would Bob, certainly be happy to help. I think then we need to go back to the existing members and ask them. And then at the same point in time, even ask the ones that are on there uh, was other than Alan Sanderson, was it John LaSalle? What LaSalle? Yeah. Okay. So maybe between Alan and John, they can, you know, come up with a, another name or two to help replace you and Melissa and, and then form their own chairman amongst themselves. Okay, I can contact John and Alan and let them know. That's a good idea. It sort of comes back to, you know, we as a committee, you know, have oversight amongst all the other subcommittees and the subcommittees then meet and come up with their own chairman. That's you know, like when we did with the pottery committee is the five of us came up with our own chairman and had our own meetings and and carried out that mission that way. Yeah, the, the only the only 
substantive difference is that fundraising really affects everything. That it's it's yeah. not a standalone group. It's uh, you know, if the fundraising isn't doing its job, then the parade and everything else doesn't get funded right. So, but yeah, I'll I'll get in touch with Alan and John and see if we can find someone else. Uh, Fred, you <laughs> should put some pressure on John LaSalle because his father was treasurer of the um, 200th anniversary right. and his father would be thrilled to have John involved. And he certainly, um, you know, Jim was a very big fundraiser. Uh, good to know. Okay. That's very good, good information. Thank you. Although I'm sad to hear you're not doing it, Fred. I, I you know, was, I think you have the experience and the coordination capabilities to lead, so. There, I haven't Fred, been I doing much in the past year on right. it anyway. I think you, I think you're right though. I think people, people who would be critics would be quick to point out that it might not be a I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing it anyway. I couldn't yeah. go to a local individual or business without feeling there was some level of coercion involved. So I, I wouldn't do it. Okay, anything else on fundraising? Because I want to keep things moving. We got a lot to talk about. Okay. Next thing, 2022 events, and I want to start with the parade. John. Should I start out with a motion to fund it? Okay. <laughs> well, start, start out with what, what you are envisioning. Um, and then we can go into what that will cost and, and funding it. Well, I would envision having a parade as we did 50 years ago. We'll have a marching parade that starts at the church and ends in East Whaley somewhere. And with Shriners, fire departments, floats, and well, it'll be 10 times what we had a month ago or two months, okay. whatever it was. Um, but I, I need to know whether there's money to go with this. There, there should be money, John. The bands, the, band, the bands cost money. That's what costs yep. the money. Yep. John, I, I think we're going to be fine with money. We've got 60000 from the town. We're looking at 10000 from the state. We've got roughly 7000 in the bank right now, six to 7000 <clears> And that's without having lifted a finger to raise money in the last year and a half. Okay, so my question is, I mean, I have not contacted, the last time I talked to the Shriners, they were still available. I believe that we're not gonna contact the, Shrun, uh, the Mummers, but there's other bands that are out there. And to me, music makes the parade. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. And they cost money. Your original budget, as I'm remembering two years ago, so I may not be right. 30, I don't remember what, what I had for dinner. It was 35, 36. So I was going to say it was in the 30s. We should be able to handle that with no trouble. Okay. Because we, we should be able to raise money. Okay. We, get, we haven't asked anybody yet. And so can once I, you start I, I asking, you will get it. My real question is, can I start confirming some of these bands to be in the parade? Let's put this to a vote. Do we want to set aside, I'm going to use the number 35,000, which is currently a little under half, assuming we get from the town tomorrow and assuming we get from the state, uh, setting aside a little less than half of our current funding, pre-fundraising uh, to make commitments for to make the parade fantastic. So I'm gonna put this to a vote. I, I, will, say, I, will, I will make that motion or second it, whichever is required. Okay, I'm going to go Motion back. Motion made and second. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start go go in the opposite direction on my screen. Lisa, Lisa, we're not hearing you. I'm afraid. 
I agree. Okay. Joyce? Sorry. Aye. Ashley? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Keith? Yes. Zach? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Don? Yes. Fred? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Jane? Yes. Chip? Yes. Don? Yes. And I'm a yes. So go do your thing, John. Okay. We'll have a parade. Yes, and it will be fantastic. And because I was so impressed with what I'm going to call the little parade, like my expectations were of it being small and it wasn't. And I know that what you are envisioning for next year is going to be significantly more substantial and awesome. So go do your thing. And, and, and you've got a built-in list of invitees from the Hatfield Parade. Well, yeah. I, my plan was to hand out invites, but it rained so damn hard, I never got out of the truck down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, understandable. I, I, have the, I have the save the date cards that are out there. And if anybody, um, it'll be the, pretty much the same. It'll be June 26th. Um, and I use my email as a contact and we'll go from there. Good. Good. Okay, other events. So anything else on the parade? That's all I needed to know. Okay, we need to start forming subcommittees to organize the events for one year from, from now. We're, we're just one year out because we're, we're talking about June 18th to the 26th. I saw Bob Upham this weekend. He hasn't been coming to our meetings because he doesn't do Zoom. Um, but he would still be interested in having the steam engine show on the 18th. So that was one of our, yeah, one of our events. Um, I'm just bringing up a list of events. So we, well, we need to get subcommittees for, let's see, Adelia, you, you had the ecumenical service. You already had your subcommittee. Yes, that's Kit Florio and Jane Gripko. Okay, and I don't know what you need to do at this point other than reserve the date, reserve the church. I, I leave it to you. What? I think we, we, we can handle that. Okay, so it's Sunday, June 19th is the date that we had slated for that. Fireman's muster, John, I assume I'm looking to you for that. That's still the 19th? Yes. Yep. Unless we change it. I mean, this is just... What do you mean, if you change it? Tell me now. Hold your no, the commit, unless the committee has a reason to change it. What we have agreed to is the 19th. Okay, that's perfect. Um, we had talked about doing some sort of tours of McLeish. I thought Melissa was handling that, which means if we want to do that, we need somebody else as a contact. We can still con get in touch with Melissa and she can tell us who her contact there was. True. We had talked about, and with a question mark, do we, because the Sunday is June 19th, it is Juneteenth, do we want to do something, have some event acknowledging Juneteenth? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody has thoughts as to what that might look like. But we can th we can think about that. We do not have events currently planned for Monday the twentieth. On Tuesday the twenty first, we'd written in the arts and crafts show. So Lisa, that's you. Also, <clears throat> Chip Chip at one point in time was going to oh, be right. involved. I don't know if Chip, if you're still looking to see what you can do to help out in the arts type of. Yeah, there might be some things we can do. Great. So can I, you know, can at this point, I figure you and Lisa will, will be spearheading that and getting people to work with you on it. I do not, whenever I'm talking about assigning somebody, I don't expect you to do all the work. I expect you to coordinate the committee that will do the work. Okay, I don't, I don't know, Chip. I know Lisa because I see her name. 
<laughs> okay, Lisa, this is Chip. Chip Powers. Chip this Chip's is real Lisa. name is Catherine Crafts. <laughs> Chip, I'm impressed that all you guys know how to do all, all this stuff. In terms of Chip, Chip was an early member of the committee who was on hiatus for health reasons and we're delighted to have back um, and had expressed interest in also being involved with some sort of arts and crafts show. I don't know and, and I don't want to do it at this meeting. If the two of you can have a conversation and see if you're on the same page and see if you're envisioning the same kind of thing. That sounds great. I'm excited. Good. Okay, so that we are looking at for June 21st. June 21st. Which is a Tuesday. June 22nd, we've, which is the Wednesday, we had talked about doing a watermelon Wednesday. Fred and I happened to run into, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Paul, Paul Newlin. We, we ran into Paul a couple of weeks ago and he's excited to put together some concerts. And I know Joyce, you had offered to coordinate that effort for concerts. Yep. You're still game? Yep. Perfect. We do not have anything on for Thursday. Just said, but yeah, but, I, I, but uh, it probably won't just be Wednesday. I was just going to say, we do not have anything on for Thursday the 23rd. So that leaves the Monday and the Thursday as other possible dates for concerts and performances. Okay. And then Friday, we have the barbecue and we had talked about having a concert at the barbecue. So two, there's, there's other things going on Friday, but if Which, we want to have the barbecue Friday, Friday, Friday the 24th. And so John, you, the firefighters are doing the barbecue? Uh, I believe so. Excellent. Uh, oh, Fred, you were talking to Brian about the tent. Do you want to, because that goes with the barbecue. You want to talk about that? Yeah, apparently, and Keith and John would know this, the town has purchased a very large 60-foot tent. That... I, believe there's a, I believe there's more than one. There's like four of them to make that space up. Is there four Okay, Keith? but that, that was going to be used as an alternate senior center site or something, but that the town does own it. Yes. Not, not the senior center. And I have already asked Brian, you know, let it, can we reserve it for, for that week? And because that would be a great thing to use for the barbecue or things like that. Right. The um, only thing in regards to that tent is it's, it, well, it may have the 60 feet. I don't remember the exact width, but it's not its not really wide. Um, it's not like a, a tent that would be 40 by 60 or something like that. This is maybe only 10 to 15 feet wide. I, I'll, I'll know more about it because we've got to go and I have to go and disassemble it in Deerfield tomorrow. Okay, but it, even at that, it may not work for a concert, but it would work for a buffet line. Yeah, it is. It is, will be something available to us, provided that it is able to be disassembled and without any issues tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get into other than it was assembled in Deerfield and has been nothing but problems since it was put in there. And the building inspector has rejected it in Deerfield, and that's why it's coming back to Whaley. Okay. Well, let it, let us know. You know, if the, if that's something we can use. Otherwise, we we'll, we can rent a tent. But if we have something, and don't have to spend the money. That gives us the money for something else. Town of Sunderland rents tents. Town of Sunderland Fire Department tents. Not anymore. Rents a tent. Not anymore. Not anymore. I think County Tech uh, just bought a big tent, and I would think if we could get an insurance writer or something like that, um, they would be glad to lend it to us. The insurance writer, Don, is the fire department controls that. It has to be fireproofed. That's the big issue with a, with a tent. Well, I can check with them, but... Uh... Okay. That would be great. Keith, if what Brian told me was correct, the problem in Deerfield is that the Deerfield building inspector didn't accept the fireproof certificate because it was a California certificate and not a Massachusetts certificate. 
So it, it sounds well like it probably is fireproof, but just there may be a small issue with it. And there was there was also some as far as the insulation goes. It was multiple issues, and hopefully it can be salvaged and we can use it. Okay, let it let us know what you find out. So if we're talking about Friday the twenty fourth, we've got the barbecue with a concert. Um, we also have the fireworks that night. On the 24th? Yeah. Was that Friday? Or, I thought that was Saturday. 24th. We've, that's Friday. Okay. I thought it was the same night as the barbecue, I, I thought. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm wrong. And let me know, these are not carved in stone, although I believe Sheila reserved the fireworks people for that date. So if we're moving, Sarah. I know she did. I know she Sarah. did. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sheila. Sorry. Sorry, Sarah reserved the fireworks people for that day. So if we're changing the day, we need to let them know. But we've got the barbecue, I'm gonna call that early evening, leading into the fireworks later in the evening. We also had talked about having Tom's do a uh, cruise night. Do we still wanna do all of those events the same day? He does well, the cruise uh, night. He does the cruise nights every other Friday this year. I was talking to him about it the other day. I don't know how that falls. He just had one this past Friday. Yeah, well, I went by it. That was amazing. If you, you I don't know, at the calendar and check and see if it maybe it falls on the right one just purely by accident. Or maybe he'll be willing to do it for us if it doesn't. He may not have even put together a schedule for next year. He can schedule around. One of the days we don't have. You know, last, work, year doing, weekend last year we did them on. every Friday, but this year he's only doing them every other Friday. So. Bill, can you talk to him and said, beg, beg him to do one on June 24th? Yep. That would be awesome. Thank you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. June 24th? Yeah, that's the that's that right. would be that Friday. You're going to do it the same night as the chicken barbecue? Well, that's what I'm asking because we've got a lot on for that night. No, I Somebody, if somebody's trying to talk, to barbecue. yeah, and I'm also concerned. Tom's does hold on, one, Brenda. I see your hand. Do with you in one second. It, you know, Tom does it to draw traffic, but is he for the food sales? But is he going to draw food sales traffic if there's the chicken barbecue? Would we want he? If, if he is wedded to Friday nights, would we consider doing the barbecue on Thursday night? I don't know if these are drawing the same crowd of people. Oh, okay. 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 Brenda, you wanted to say something? I just, my personal feeling is that barbecue, the fireworks, and Tom's would be kind of crowded for one night. Be, mm -hmm. You know, be. I, I would like to see maybe Tom's could do it on a Thursday night, a special one on Thursday night. Is that the night we have open? I mean, we would have to say we have open. We have one day yeah. open. Yeah, we have Thursday. We have Monday open and we have Thursday open right now. Um, I yeah, We would have to talk to him to see if he would be open to doing it on a Thursday instead of a Friday. Would he get his participants? I think there are also rules around antique cars. They can't be driven outside of the weekends or something like that. So. Oh. oh, no. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Brenda, you're breaking up. Um, they can drive them anytime. I says anti cars cannot are not restricted. They can be any time. Okay. Uh, a person can drive in an anti car. There's no restrictions on them. They have their own special plates, but uh, there's no restrictions on when they can be used. Okay, Bill, if you would talk to Tom's and see if they would be open to doing it on thir on the Thursday. If not, then we may need to revisit the chicken barbecue for Thursday instead of Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can't move the fireworks. I think that personally, I think that the chicken barbecue by itself as a standalone event is a losing proposition. Mm -hmm. 
I think you've got, right. to it to, you've got to attach it to something else, I think, to make it work. I don't think people are going to come out just to go get a piece of chicken. And for a concert. Well, and the fireworks. Well, I think she's talking about putting on a date there's no fireworks. Um, I wonder if um, another alternative for Tom's would be, I mean, I know we had talked about we start Saturday and we end the following weekend, Sunday. <laughs> but I wonder if that could be sort of a kickoff event the previous Friday. Oh, the 17th? That's, yeah. That's what I was thinking also. That's an idea. But yeah, there's nothing, nothing magical about the time frame that we had. I'm sorry, Joyce. What did you say you wanted on the 17th? Um, yeah, whatever the previous Friday. Well, the, what, what the, Tom, the Tom's antique car. Oh, right. Or whatever. Okay. What's the date on that? The 17th. That'd be the Friday before, right? Right. Right. And that, I think that's a great idea. We still have a tractor parade listed, but is that a thing now or is that. Definitely. I'm sorry? Definitely. There's okay. going to be an, an awful lot of people that want tractors, and, and it's not going to be something that we can um, allow as many tractors that want to participate in the in the, the traditional trade. It's only going to be like a mile. It, it would be, we'd have more tractors than we'd know what to do with. OK. So that was also on Saturday the 18th. I skipped over that. I'm trying to see what else I skipped over. I'm afraid I'm not doing this in a scientific way. Okay, so Bill, if you can talk to Tom's instead of what we talked about on for Friday the 17th. Does everybody like the idea of doing it the previous Friday to get it away from the barbecue and the fireworks? Yes. Well, Is that all you would have would be the uh, fireworks on that day? No. I'm sorry? Say that again? Is that all you'd have on that Friday would be the fireworks? The chicken barbecue with its um, corresponding concert. On that Friday before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. So people, could, no. people go the, to the, 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 the first after. Friday, the first Friday, which is the 17th, is yeah. the cars. The second Friday, the 24th, would be the barbecue with concert and fireworks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then on Saturday, the 25th, I would love to do family day, but we're at the mercy of the PTO. If they are willing, still willing to put that together. And at this point, I can't, we can't really approach them again until September because they're done for the year. Um, I well, the alternatives for them would be the, the previous Saturday, right? No, they, it's got to be a Saturday pretty much, right? Right, right. So the previous Saturday, we've got the tractor parade and the steam engine show. Um, so it could be either Saturday, I suppose. But it's more a matter of are they still willing to take it on? So we'll find we'll find out. And then Sunday we've got the parade as our wrap up event. Am I missing anything? Are there any events? Family day included, uh, tethered balloon rides, big trucks, food trucks, hot dog eating contest. Uh, Don, you said to take off the parachute jump because the people were retiring. Okay, pony rides, pottery demo, and possibly a road race. We, we have scrapped any other eating event, the gala. Yeah, there's no gala, right? Is that still scrapped? Yeah, I, I thought we had voted to do to abandon that one. Yeah, we did. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, just double checking. Yeah. Okay, so. You know, I, I think when it comes back to a lot of these events, we need to go back to like our liaisons that we, you know, we as the committee had get back out to all of those people that were going to be involved. Yeah. And, and we need to get updated budgeted budgets from these different events 
and yep. us as committee members bring them back with updated numbers for our budget so that we can ma start matching it up. I mean, we, we're already talking like with John with the parade of the 35,000, we need to we need to start to line up the other budget items to make sure that what we have in fundraising matches what we're looking at spending. Right. Not included in this, the historical um, commission is putting together a, I'm calling it a historical treasure hunt, geocaching, go around town and find hidden history treasures and the cemetery commission had talked about doing uh, reenactments. I don't know if there are any other events that we are not coordinating, but that need to go into our schedule. No. And if anybody knows of any of that. Is, what, is the tethered balloon also out? That was on family day. Oh, that's family. Okay, that's part of family day, fine. Yeah. And that, that I'll, I will get an updated budget number on that since I had contacted um, Paul Cena from Worthington. I can, um, I'll reach out to him to see if anything's changed there, if he's still willing to do it, and if we can schedule it to, to work with one of our other events. It's not going to be a, a standalone type of thing, right. but it would certainly okay. complement a family day. Yeah. But Keith, Keith yeah. as far as your question goes about do, Yes, we need budgets from everyone, but getting taking off a gala, which was a big dollar item, if we can get someone essentially to underwrite the fireworks, which I think we should be able to do, we should be okay for money, assume, you know, assuming we have the other 70,000 come in, you know, 40 is done. 20 should be done tomorrow, and 10, we hope, will get done. But Brad, what was the number on the fireworks? What was the budget uh, number? 8,500. Okay. Um, and I assume if what we... What was it? Eight, Can you repeat that? Eight, eight, I think Sarah's number to me was 8,500 for fireworks. Um, I had told Teresa when she was going to talk to people if anyone wants to underwrite it to call it 10,000. Uh, but we never got that far as to in any conversations. But I also would think that if we wanted, you know, if we got someone to underwrite fireworks to the extent of 15,000, let's say, we could expand the fireworks program. I assume we can go to the, the fireworks company and say, give us more, and they would. I agree. Yeah, it, seemed, it, it seemed like it was a sliding scale. We can right. get yeah. more. If we pay more, we can get more. Right. So once we start fundraising if, and trying to get sponsors for individual events, if someone wants to underwrite fireworks, then we'll see to what dollar. But I, but Keith, just to answer your question, taking that gala out removes our second biggest line item. Yeah, I, I understand that. I just feel that since we've been treading water for the last year and now we're looking to ramp things up and we're mm -hmm. actively going out and trying to, to tighten up these subcommittees and get things rolling again, I just feel we need to, you know, ask the subcommittees to come back with updated numbers, if anything. Oh, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. But just in my mind, ballpark, we should be in reasonably good shape, given that we haven't raised anything significant yet. I'm going to throw in something that's, that there's something that's really missing from this. And probably we should have talked about it way, way back. But the 200, one of the biggest excitements was the Polish polka dance. And I haven't heard dance at all this whole week or longer. So and that night we had three dances going on. We had a dance at the high school for the young people. We had a dance in the town hall for the older ones who wanted to waltz and square dance. And we had, I think Kathy Louie or someone was down at the fire station. 
we had three dances going on the same night and some people went to all three. Do you remember that, Brenda? You were kids, I think, or Jane or whatever. I just put that out because it's me. Yeah. Thing. Okay. What, what do people think? I mean, we can... I, obviously it needs a chair and a whatever, but it just seems like we haven't, we don't have a dance in this whole celebration. Yeah, the, po the polka dance and the uh, teen dance was, was a big, big hit. Your parents were in charge of that one. Uh, so yeah, if, if, I know. Is there interest in doing a dance? Let me start with that. People want to add that to the schedule? We've got a night for it, which would probably be Thursday. Which I mean, it open. could even be a schedule then like with the, the chicken barbecue could be tied in with like a square dancing or, or the, not necessarily square dancing, but I was thinking like the polka music. That could all be tied in at the same night. There's many other local bands um, that like Hatfield was utilizing like um, Cottonwood and TJ and the Peepers. There's, there's many other local um, bands that play around here that travel to different clubs that, that we can utilize on different nights at different right. events to just complement what we're doing. There's also a pretty big contra dancing network now in the area so we, there are lots of callers and players and things if we wanted to organize something like that i think they isn't there a dance barn over in yeah. west waitley i can that's my neighbor i i have no problem i'll reach out to him to see um if flora and um i'm trying to think of her number name i think our big is, issue is having someone to coordinate it it's yeah that could be a lot of work someone to take charge of that of operation It's nice to say, wouldn't it be nice to have, but we need someone to, to run it. Yeah, but if you know people, talk to them because it would be great to add this to the schedule either Thursday or Friday as part of the barbecue. Um, well, I, I think a polka dance would be a big success because we live in an extended community of a lot of Polish heritage. Mm -hmm. So if we got a good poker band, I think we would get a big turnout for that. That's awesome. That's what we want. I and agree. Eddie Foreman is a good band. Lisa, we're having a hard, very hard time hearing you. You're coming I'm across so garbled. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> we value what you're saying, but we can't hear you. I know. I'm sorry. That's yeah, okay. So it sort of sounds like you're underwater. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm on my cell phone. I don't have a computer at home. My work computer's at work. But um, I said I thought a poker dance would be really great. And Eddie Foreman is a really great. What I got from that was that you're in favor of the polka dance. I couldn't hear the second. Part. I know he's played at the Sunderland at the, um, at the elementary school quite a few years ago. That's fine. I'll email it. Yeah, I was, that's exactly what I was going to say is if you know somebody, email. Okay, let's put this to a vote of do we want to have a polka dance? Because it's in the discussion, that sounds like what I'm hearing the most of. Um, Chip? Um, yeah. I think that uh, there are some valid points brought up, and if you can do it and find somebody to organize it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the big part is. Uh, There's a lot need... into it. I mean, you've got security, yeah. you've got the place, you got the bands, or. Right. So we would need some, be, somebody who knows. Yes, people there. Yeah. Monitor it. It's a big deal. Yeah. John, are you in favor of this? I, you know, hypothetically, if we can find somebody to run it? To run it? Yes. Fred? Yes, with the same proviso that Chip just gave. We need someone yeah. to take to own it. Yeah, but the, the, I guess what, what we're voting on is if we want the idea, because the next thing will be, OK, you all need to talk to people you know who know something about this. Brenda, mm -hmm. you're in favor? 
I definitely. Jane? Yes, I'm thinking that we would draw a lot of people from outside of the area. Nice. Keith? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Zach? Certainly. Adelia? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Don? Yes. Ashley? I, yeah, I like it as a kind of an alternative to the gala, like a grown up night out in a way. Yeah. Lisa? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So anyone who knows anyone who could help put this together, talk to them and come back next month with, you know, with ideas of who, who could spearhead this, because if we don't have somebody to spearhead it, it won't happen. Unless any of you want to take it on, I'm not in a position to do so. Is it definitely been decided that it's to be in a polka format or are you just looking for a general dance, be it polka or not? I put that to the group. What I was hearing in our discussion was a lot of talk of polka, um, but do people feel strongly that we want something else? I think probably we can just do a dance and make sure we include some polkas. Because I know a lot of people like to do different kinds of dances. Mm -hmm. okay. Most polka bands, most polka bands will play all kinds of music. Okay, yes. fine. So it, it's not, it doesn't have to be limited. That's great. No, it doesn't. And you have a lot of, you, I mean, Polish community, Sunderland, South Deerfield, you know, Waitley, uh, Chicopee, you know, we could be drawn from, from quite a ways off, Hatfield, Hadley. So, um, and there's not that many around, but I mean, everybody, uh, never mind. I just says everybody has fun at a poke. But yeah. And I it. think Thursday, I, I would suggest Thursday night is the perfect night to do that because it's an open night. We're not competing with anything else. If we did it on Friday, then we have to shut it down when it's fireworks time. You know, Thursday, I think, I propose Thursday, the 23rd as the time to do this. Anybody have a different opinion? No, okay, but so I'll, I'll second it, that. Okay, I'll put it yeah. on the calendar for the 23rd, assuming we get somebody to do it. We need someone to do it and we need to figure out a venue Mm -hmm. And a budget. And, yeah. Well, the, the, the venue may help drive the budget because assuming we're looking to attract people from out of town, we'll be charging admission. And how many people we have will help mm -hmm. guide admission costs. Yeah. I mean, is it is at the school gym or is it at the town hall? <laughs> I was just going to say, is this something that could be done at the at upstairs of the town hall? Is it big enough for what we're envisioning? No. It, no. It, wouldn't, it, didn't, it wouldn't have, it didn't work 200, 50 years ago. I'm thinking, if I'm not mistaken, it was at the fire station. Yeah. Was it the highway yes. garage, Adelia? Highway, highway department. Yeah. Under the right. I'm sorry. Right. You're right. Yeah. I'm in the With the big, big tent. Big tent. And if we have the big tent there for the, the barbecue, it's there for the Thursday night dance perfect. perfect perfect are you looking for beverages too to be included this time slot you can't um, have a dance without beer chip you know that that's uh, how are those regulations we just gotta have a permit okay it's and it's part, all part of the organizational job that has to be done for this right 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 okay I don't want to take too much time on that because believe it or not, we're only on the second item on our agenda and it's almost eight o'clock. Oh, uh, <laughs> and you know how I feel about long meetings. Moving on. For those who were in, for those who were at last month's meeting, I apologize for repeating myself, but I have to repeat myself for those who were not. I want to talk about the gifts to the town. I met with the um, library board and they not only approved the idea of putting both a stone bench and that panorama of the view uh, behind the library, they were really excited about this. I have gotten, I don't want to call them bids, estimates for the bench 
And I think it was coming out like $2,500. It's not expensive. There was a place in Greenfield that was excited to do this with us and would give us a break. And Allison had estimated the panorama <laughs> as 1,000 to 1,500. So I think for the two things we're talking about $5,000. Uh, my personal opinion is we should not use money that we are given by the town or the state for that. It should be money from the residents. And I, Fred, Keith, and I have talked a little bit about this of designating the money from the pottery sales to fund this because that was that's money we earned. That wasn't given to us by anybody. We've earned that. I know money is money in different pockets, but to me, it's important that we say this was funded by the people of Waitley. Um, I wish Allison were on the call, but I know this is her busy time of year. <laughs> I've got a thumbs up from Joyce on that idea. Yeah, I guess, I guess you know, dis discussion on that, I, on that part of it, the funding. Do we still want to do both the panorama and the bench? Total cost 5,000. I think they work well together. Yes. They work well together, but they serve different purposes. The panorama educates people now, and I'm going to say in the near future. I love the idea of the stone bench because that'll be there at the 350 and the 400. Um, you know, from the f from the people from the 250. Correct. There right now that we we move. Uh, there's a wooden one that we move in and out every winter <clears throat> and bring it back out in the spring. So, I mean, while that one is still in good shape, that's all there is at the moment. If you walk out there and you want to sit down and and enjoy the view and have a reflection. Yeah, and this is something that will last. For eternity. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. So I guess, can I, I have a... I move, I move that we uh, do those two uh, uh, for gifts to the town. Thank you, Adelia. Do I have a second? A second. Second. Uh, okay, where am I on people? Keith. Yes. Bill. Yeah. Zach. Yep. Adelia. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Don. Yes. Ashley. Yes. Lisa. Yes. John. Yes. Chip. Yes. Jane. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Fred. Yes. Me. Yes. Did I miss anybody? Good. I'm trying to get you know, mix up the order, and but I don't want to miss anybody. Great. So I will. Re go back to the place in Greenfield about the bench and I will give Allison permission to, to put into motion the panorama. Um, next item, Keith, the status of the cake. It has been moved from Hatfield to Waitley and um, we have begun to assemble it. Um, I had actually spoken to the chairman of the Deerfields committee and suggested that they come and watch as it gets assembled. And so we're gonna coordinate that. Um, I would say at this point in time, within a, within a week's time, it should be assembled. And then we'll follow up with the electrical work to get that the wiring connected in and it should be up in illuminated within a few weeks. Great. Um, Great. A few other things that I can just add to that is, um, as maybe not everybody knows, but the town of Hatfield has chosen to, in a sense, give it to us. So um, if we purchase it for a dollar, one of the things that they want to see is that it be, um, be the same thing here on down the line. They don't want anybody profiting from it going forward. So um, a couple things that, that Happy would like to do is they were going to look into having a plaque made 
that would be attached to it that could be engraved as to where it's where it's been. Oh, that's a cool idea. And that's a also, very cool. And also, they're looking at trying to um, incorporate a like a photo album type thing that will be handed down from one cake from one town to another. The cake was originally built for the city of Westfield, and that's where it was for the for its beginning. And then Hatfield purchased it from Westfield, and at this point in time, Deerfield is um, is very interested in it, and they already have told me today that they already have a location for it. And then I also have the contact of a the person from the town of Leverett who would they want it for 2024. So as it goes forward, um, we're, we're that far ahead already with, with communities that have asked for it. Um, and what else can I say about it? the other thing that's, as far as the construction of it goes, um, the, the materials that it was made with are not going to last forever. So as it goes forward, it's going to probably need some, some TLC and some, um, changes you know to fix things up beef things up as it goes forward but it, it's not going to last for forever but it's certainly in good enough shape where it will last for um certainly you know the next three to five years without any problem nice do we want to have some sort of lighting you know ceremony acknowledgement of when it when it's up and running we could that could be something done invite the community Joyce, I'd like, when? I'd like an ice cream social. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And that from somebody who really knows how to organize an ice cream social. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. Joyce, yeah. when is the next, when's the deadline for the next scoop? Because I'm thinking if we were doing something like that, that's the scoop is a great way yeah. to advertise it. Um, it's mid-May. Uh, I'll look up the date and put it in the chat. So mid-May, we're already in June. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what month is it? <coughs> uh, so we missed, 14. we missed that deadline. Um, <laughs> no, it'll be late August then for the, uh, hopefully it gets out before Labor Day weekend, but I'll look it up. Okay. So I don't know if we want to hold off. Till no, then. I think that's a great idea. Let's just try it. I don't think we'll be able to, to utilize a scoop as a advertising but we should have it sometime in the summer maybe um if it's an ice cream social type thing we can find one or two mm. um, mobile ice cream trucks that could come in and serve some ice cream that sounds like a great idea that would be or a blast maybe we can see yeah. if pachesnik's will underwrite it oh good idea <laughs> yeah yeah that's right up their alley absolutely Great. Okay, I'm excited about that. Keith, what one question about it? Has has the base been placed yet, or is it just? It is. Um, it is in place. We just need to to um, for, you know finalize it, but it's in place. Okay, because I was just you know in placing it, making sure it doesn't get in the way of whatever tents we may want to put there for events later. No, it will definitely not be in the way of any tents. Okay. Good. Okay, next on the agenda. I didn't know what to call this item. I called it the commemorative publication. Do we want to have some documentation of all of the events that we have that can be passed down? Like we're referencing the book from 50 years ago that people can have on their book. Well, I shouldn't say have on their bookshelf. People can have in their home it can be passed down, referenced 50 years from now of all of the events, the people who were organizing each event, the people who participated. You know, I'm, I'm envisioning lots of photographs just with captions of what all we did. Do we want to do that? Do I need to do a roll call on that? I mean, I think this is a general, do people feel the need to have something commemorating what we did. Again, it really comes down to if we can get a, a subcommittee of people that are willing to, to oversee it and coordinate it. Um, I, I want to say I had thought Fred Orlowski 
Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought he had said at some point in time he had someone that was maybe willing to, to be involved in that. Does that sound well, familiar? He, I, I talked to him about it. He was going to approach George Colt and have him you know, write a narrative about it. Um, he had George has he had not yet approached George. I told him not to until we talked about it. To, which brings me to the second part of my question: of What do we want? First of all, do we want a book, a physical book? Do we want a video? Do we want some sort of digital something? And I try to envision what is the world going to be like in 50 years that we, what we do now would be most accessible to that. Physical book versus something digital. Will anybody have books then? Is our, will our digital be obsolete by then? Who knows? I think we should, I think we should go with a book because uh, personally, because you look at even in the past 10 years, how much digital has changed and, you know, from Super 8 to, you know, whatever now, uh, we don't know what will be available you know, in, in another 25, even 10 years, never mind 25, 50 years. So I personally think a book is something would be more long lasting than a digital. Other opinions? This is what we need. Yep. Our wonderful Whiteley. And all we need to do is get five or six people who are photographers and they can take the pictures and it can be found up in a book. Mm -hmm. You still need an editor. I understand, but I'm, we've got to find the person who will yeah. do that. Other thoughts? What about Does somebody I like say the idea of a book. I mean, it's easy to display. Anybody can see it. Um, it really has a place in this kind of a format. Yeah, I think I when, when libraries go to, when they talk about preservation, they don't want to just have a digital version mm. of something. They want if they're you know, preserving something, they want a hard copy. Yeah, yeah. But we, if we do a book like that, there can certainly be a digital version as well. It's just yeah. a question of yeah, absolutely. But I, yeah, right. there can be a PDF version posted. That's not a problem. Um, but I don't think we should count on just digital. No, I, I agree. It's worth budgeting um, money for <coughs> for a printing. I like the idea of a printing as well and something that's that's highly visual. If we do it through, uh, um, uh, just lost it in my brain. Oh, uh, through Kindle, through uh, they they can produce that and they can e you can either buy it as a book or or um, as a digital an, an ebook. Does anybody want, I'm hearing a lot of arguments for a book. Does anybody want to argue for a different format? I think we'll already have some of that, a different format preserved through our, our, our social media <coughs> and, um, and just video things as we go along, so. Okay. Provided, provided we can find someone that, that oversee it and and as it was mentioned, basically be willing to be the publisher. It not, you know, just needs to oversee it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Would, would this publication be given during the events or after, like post events? I think I'm envisioning after because what we want to do is have taken photographs at all of the events and then yeah. provide commentary on them. So this is something that would be available after uh, for people to see what we did. Right. Does anybody have a different yes. view on that? 
No, I just wanted to clarify. I mean, I'd be happy to help with that after of course, my event was over and at the end, I'd be happy to help somebody work on that. Oh, fantastic. And Zach and I are working on the uh, geologic history, and she's got a lot of experience in, in publishing. Uh, next time I talk to her, I could ask her about it. Who? Wendy Who? Curtis. Don't know. Don't know her, but yeah, I mean, if people know people who would be. Well, I'm a graphic designer, so I could definitely. Oh. You, are oh. we, you are who we need, yes. <laughs> It, it okay. can also tie into fundraising because you you can sell ads in the back if we right yes like a, like a yearbook type of thing right yeah. yeah that's a really good idea yes yes and that's brilliant yes good okay so let's keep talking about that and most importantly as things are going on now let's make sure we get pictures of it like at the parade. I just made sure I took picture or yeah, that Fred and I took pictures of all the floats. It wasn't anything fancy, but we wanted to record it so that we can put something in it. Yeah, and Ashley, you've got those pictures now, right? Yeah, I do. Good, okay. Before we move on to the next item, I just wanted to mention uh, an update on the quilt committee and it's on my phone. I don't know how to share it with people, but the quilt committee has, done a beautiful job they're they are about to assemble the quilt but they have all the pieces and i saw a picture of it laid out where there's a centerpiece that is the logo and then there are just small squares all around not the squares are i'm gonna call them decorative they're not images of particular things but it's just a beautiful quilt featuring the logo melissa and I were talking about that will be done this summer. Um, we would love to display that and the quilt from 50 years ago. I want to say on a traveling basis, we want to make it accessible to people. So you know, have it at the library, have it at town hall, possibly once the school's in session, have it at the school, particularly if there's you know town meeting going to be at the school, um, if we you know, go back to indoor things could we have it for the cake lighting um depends if it's done it, that would be a great time to unveil it yeah. and depends if it's raining well <laughs> that point. would be a fan you can put it on enough <laughs> uh i will keep you posted they're they're having it put together they by, by an outside person. They've hired someone to put it together. And I, the timeline was July, but I don't know an exact date, but we may want to schedule the cake. We can have the cake going before we do the official cake lighting. If we want to have an event, it may be worth holding off until we have the quilt to unveil for that as well. I don't know how other people feel about that. I think it would make it extra special. So I like yeah. the idea of that. And it sounds like the timing, I mean, it's almost July already, you know, this, the timing could work out. Right. Good. Okay. Next item on our list is the tag sale. Do we want to resurrect doing the September tag sale that we had done pre pandemic? We have lost Jennifer who was running it. Is that something that we feel is important? I don't think it's worth the effort of someone who could be doing something else to put that together. Other if someone's willing to put in that much work, we've got other things that need <laughs> doing. Other opinions? I guess this one I have to put to a vote of tag sale, nay, yay or nay, but other discussion before we vote? Uh, how much do we make on that, Fred? Very little. A few hundred, yeah. if I recall. A few hundred, yeah. For many, many hours of work. Yeah, it's. I don't. I don't feel it's in my mind, like Fred said. But if someone's willing to put time in, we have other things that could net us more than that. Okay. <laughs> Let's let's put this well. 
I need a motion. I think I need a motion to have the tag sale that we can then vote it, yay or nay on. It, I don't think you need a, a vote at all. As of now, there's no tag sale. If you don't have a vote, there's no tag sale. Right. You need a consensus agreement. Okay, anybody feel strongly they want the tag sale to come back? Fine, it's gone. Okay, the next okay. one, the next one, and I have to check you know, the news to know the current status of this, whether we can keep meeting via Zoom is changing literally hour by hour. The Senate voted on Friday <laughs> to extend. I have an update on that if you want. Oh, go please, please. Um, well, that um, ability to meet by Zoom uh, officially ends at 12.01 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. So if we were meeting tomorrow, we would not be able to meet by Zoom. If you um, were a committee expect, covered by the me. open meeting law. Yeah, excuse me. Um, the uh, You can still meet. You can't do it exclusively by Zoom. You have to have uh, in-person uh, committee members, a quorum has to be present and the chair has to be present at the in-person part. Uh, the select board passed um, a policy, I think policy is the right word for it, that um, should this event happen, that the, uh, the, the emergency order expires without legislation, that we can still have some people uh, participate by Zoom. You just have to obey the rest of the open meeting law, which basically says board members uh, need to have a quorum there that includes the chair. You can have public participation via Zoom. Um, and we said you sh we, they, that we would like people to do that. We would also like them to continue recording it. Um, so that's what we made the policy that basically, yeah, when the, when the law says you have to meet in person, you gotta meet in person, um, but you should also allow participation by Zoom. Um, and that's the, where the state, the status is at the moment. Um, there, we, I got a, a, a informational email from our legal counsel telling us that, and also telling us that they do expect at some time that the House and the Senate will reconcile their bills, which are a little bit different, and get us through the summer. So I would not be surprised if our next meeting could be all by Zoom. Um, but we certainly would have the option of in-person if we wanted to at this point with, um, I, I think whatever they're going to do, they're not going to mandate that you must only meet by Zoom. They're just going to allow it uh, so we can have a transition period. Uh, it's expected that that will last through the summer. Um, so everything I said after, you know, uh, that's what's expected. <laughs> but, um, uh, but what's, you know, legal at this point is we may have to meet in person next time. Um, but we should allow uh, people to meet, uh, to join the meeting by Zoom, so long as it's not um, a majority are meeting by Zoom, we need a quorum in the room. That's the part, th thank you. But that's the part that I can't figure out how it works, is how do you control who, who goes in person to make sure you have enough people in person? if people what would prefer to be on Zoom? Uh, it might be a job for the chair. Like if, okay. if you know, for example, <laughs> for me, it's, it's not that big a deal necessarily for me. I don't have childcare you know, uh, um, or anything like that. Um, but maybe, uh, the, the, maybe the chair can uh, worry about that. Okay. Um, I, maybe when you send out the notices, yeah. ask for response, whether you, plan to attend if so in person or by zoom yeah the planning board had a practice session today uh where we set up everything in the town office and then had some of the members come in on on zoom yeah it worked pretty well yep and uh yeah for six months when i was in sweden i attended every select board meeting via zoom as well Mm -hmm. um, so that that's already in the law that um, a some portion of the board can join remotely. Um, I think during the pandemic, uh, it was re required that you meet by Zoom. But I'm glad the planning board did that. So we've got a proof of concept. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> Okay, so everybody pay attention when I send out the notice for the July meeting. Um, 
because from what Joyce is saying, the rules might change between now and then. Correct. Yep. So please pay attention. I'll try to be clear in my email about it, but whether whether there's an in-person in component and if so, where it'll be, it'll be town hall, town offices, for example, and maybe, well, I guess we could do town hall if we did upstairs, if we're still doing social distancing, who knows what the world's gonna look yeah. like a month from now. Yeah, but yeah the, um, the other policy we had was that if you're, ha when you're having these meetings, you have to obey whatever the masking requirements are. And right now the masking requirements are if you're indoors and you can maintain social distance, you do not have to wear a mask. If you are indoors and you uh, can't uh, or don't want to maintain social distance, then you should wear a mask. Okay. So that and that could change, but yeah. that, that, that's um, there's there's nothing that would prevent a group that wants to meet in person from meeting in person. They just have a couple of rules to follow. Thank you. Okay. So pay pay attention when I send out the notice because I'll have to include what the current status is on that. Which brings me to, that's a nice segue into our next meeting is scheduled for July 12th. Um, anybody have a reason that that date doesn't work? I mean, it's not a holiday or anything, but I always feel like if a bunch of people are gonna be out of town, it's easier to reschedule. Yeah. Um, I'll be out of town, but I could join by Zoom. Okay. Any other business? In that case, do I have a motion to adjourn? A moved. <laughs> you were quick on that one, Adelia. <laughs> Thank you. Seconded. And do we have to do a roll call on that one? Oh, yeah. Okay, Lisa. Yes. Ashley. Yes. Keith. Yes. Jane. Jane, I couldn't hear you. Yeah. Uh, Chip. Yes. Brenda. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Zach. Yes. Bill. Yep. Don. Yes. Lisa. Yes, you already asked me. Oh, sorry. Joyce? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Fred? Yes. John? Yes. And me? Yes. Thank you, everybody. A very productive meeting. Please, over the next month, think about who you can involve in um, helping to organize these individual events and come to the meeting with their names. Sue and Jane, can I speak to you? Sure. Yep, we can you... stay on. Okay. Uh, I had a lot of uh, gaps in my communication. Like somebody said something and I wasn't sure who said it uh, because I had a frozen screen. You know, I got bits and pieces. So maybe Jane and I can talk on the phone and fill in. It's also no, not as far critical. as the minutes are concerned. It's not critical that you record who says what. Well, I meant just, it, I mean, it's who is on, I shouldn't say who who asked for it, but who um, who's in charge, like the engine. I'm say the, that again. Uh, the steam engine. I couldn't hear who was oh. in charge of the steam engine. Bob Upham, U P H A M. He's on Christian okay, Lane. <laughs> okay. Nope. I know where you mean. He's got his steam engines in back. Yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. Where. And he, yep. he does, yeah. he does, you know, a festival of sorts every June. Yes. So he's going to coordinate. Yes. With okay. Him. Yes. I know who you mean. Yeah, I know. I know who you mean. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions that you had? Brenda, can I have your telephone number? You yes, you certainly Brenda? can. It's four five two two zero four seven nine. And Jane, can I have Wait yours? I'm sorry, I didn't get the last four digits. 
0479. 0479. 0479. Yes, 413. Okay, thank you. Can I have yours, Jane? Uh, 665-2992. Six six five two nine nine two. Correct. Thank you. See, I, I everybody seems to be breaking up tonight, and it might be my uh, reception. Yeah, Zoom does that. Good. Well, thank you both. I appreciate your you're doing the minutes. However, the two of you work it out. It's just okay. Sure. I know. I know. I'm in good. We're in good hands with the two of you. <laughs> Thank you. All right.